Absolutely. You mentioned the, the, the wheels. There was um, a time when only the steel wheel was available. And then in the mid 1960s, um, the the aluminium or magnesium wheel became available. Minulite. Yeah. Cool. Was this an advantage to to take less weight in the in the wheel, or was it simply just for brake cooling that it was important? We've got. I, I don't remember when we got to aluminium wheels. We got them very early. And uh, the the point is that the steel wheels were too narrow. Okay. For the the width was too yeah. narrow. But we had radial, uh, you know, cross ply tires. And for the cross ply tire, the rim width is not as important as for a radial, the radial tire, which keeps its form mm. because of belt easier. But you need, therefore, for the radial tire a wider wheel if you want to have the maximum surface. But the aluminium wheel is much stronger. The problem with steel wheels are A, the wheel bolts, wheel nuts, yeah. are being pulled through. Mm -hmm. I have lost many wheels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it means that the life of a steel wheel is very short. In competition. In competition. Yeah. We, we, we actually, we should, we were using them, but we should not drive ever more than 2,000 kilometers on a wheel, on a steel wheel. Goodness, I didn't know that. Because we, they, are flex, they, they keep flexing. Yeah, even if the nuts are done up tight. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, okay. one, okay. and then you have to change wheels often, you see. Yeah. Because the tire wear is there. And, and therefore you are wearing out of the wheel as mm. well. And the next point is, which is even worse, on, on a forest stage, where you have rocks and holes, you bent the wheel rim. Mm. Yeah. And we were using uh, tubes in the, in the tires then, but you couldn't use the steel wheels without tubes. Because the tire would flex off? No, because when you hit the bump and the steel wheel will bend, the air will come out. Yeah, okay. So when you got the aluminium or magnesium wheels, yes. they have every advantage, not just lightness or... Yes, uh, in theory this lightness is important, as I said earlier. For the response of the yes. car. Yes, yeah. with a 10 inch wheel, the wheels are lighter. And, and therefore you have a better acceleration. In theory, the ratio between uh, sprung and unsprung weight is mm. more... Yeah, sure. This is better which means that you can again keep the wheels better on the ground. That's one point. So the Mini had very many small details which just happen to work as an advantage. You mentioned the tyres. Um, there were cross-ply tyres for racing, CR65 and, and these Dunlop tyres. Yes. But most of the rally tyres, I think, were radials. In the beginning, not. They were not available. In the very early days? No, they were not available. Okay. But the tyre technology became very sophisticated with the Mini, with the, the forest radials, the, the, the SP44s of many types. Yes. And yes. then the special yes. studded yes. tyres from yes. um, correct. Correct. Finnish manufacturers and others. Correct. It became very, very specialised. Because the tyre was more important, because the problem with the 10-inch wheel is, is the, the life of mm -hmm. the tyre, very, very short. Yeah. Because when, a, when rubber gets hot, it gets soft. And we had a problem overheating the tires, on tarmac especially, and a wear rate on, on gravel. I noticed from the old pictures that you used to use the, the, the CR65 cross-ply tire whenever it was possible, or, or even the, the other Dunlop racing tires, um, even in conditions that might seem dangerous to, to motorists today. Yeah, I was the first one in the world to, to use an, an R7 to, racing tire. To choose, to choose racing yeah. tires. Because I was the first Could you explain the perhaps why, why you made this The point was decision. that a normal tire had such a, a small contact area. You were wearing out quicker and the traction wasn't good enough. So I was looking for more traction. And the racing tire was is built for traction. Mm -hmm. And we use them on, I just now studied, 
Oh, only studied. Studied racing tires? Yes. Well, goodness me. And, and, and the reason is that if you have a stage, special stage, like Mont Ventoux in, in France, mm -hmm. which normally has 70% dry and then a little bit of ice, mm -hmm. you, would, you are so much faster than the racing tire. On the dry. Because of the 80% the, the that is not ice covered? Yes. And then you were slower on ice, but then you have to be careful. But on the racing, the racing tire on ice, without sp uh, spikes, it is, is hopeless. Okay. It's very, very difficult. I, I, I used in Monte Carlo, thanks to our ice not cruise. Yeah. I used racing tires when Porsches were on 700 spikes per tire, which then was a great thing to beat with a little mini, a, mm. a, a, a car twice the power. But they didn't have the information, you see. We, no. we had the best ice not cruise. Yes, but those, the, the tires for that year, 1967, they, they, the racing tires were carrying studs or not studs? We, we, I don't think we... I'm not sure if we had racing tires in 67, I can't remember which event we had them. But I had in 1967 very special tires which nobody else had, which I personally studied in my mm -hmm. hotel room. Hotel was called Hotel du LDR. Mm -hmm. H-E-L-D-E-R. Opposite to Casino. I don't think it exists anymore. But no, yeah. it doesn't, uh, in Monte Carlo. And I had taken with me from Finland a compressor for yeah. air and a, a high speed drill to drill holes in the tires and a studding gun and a studs. And I made it in my hotel room uh, before the nice uh, uh, last mountain circuit. I did my own study in a totally different way from everybody else. I put the outside shoulder studs inside the rubber. You couldn't see them. They were two millimeters within the rubber. The next line was coming close to rubber. And then on the inside I had a huge overhang. And having narrow wheels and a suitable tire pressure, so the tire would flex. So that in the beginning of Turini climbing for the first seven Ks, I had a rubber to road contact and I was so much faster. And I would think... Because you were running on the outside of the tyre. Yes, in the I think yeah. we were on 10 kilometers distance. It was lesser. But if it would have been 10 kilometer dry, I was 40, 40 seconds to one minute faster than the competitors on full study tyres. And as the tyre wore and the studs came to the surface... Then they were out when I came to the... Top. To the ice and snow. Okay. Which and way did you go over? We, we did you went both we, ways? We went okay. both ways. Because I know from experience that the tyre needs to be different for the different ways. Yes, over. That's but right. you know, you cannot have everything. That's right, it's a different character of the road. Sure, it is quite different. Uh, but of course this only worked as long as only for the one stage. Yeah. But if you can if you can get 40 seconds advantage on one yeah, stage it's very because of tyres, yeah. that's already is a big advantage. But that had nothing to do with the Mini, that had to no, do with you know, sure. this idea. We, I, I, I came up to the idea just a week before the rally. Mm. Um, we were talking about the, the racing tyres. One other thing occurs uh, to me that I've heard before, that the shoulder of the racing tyre was very square. And this so, is something that people liked to, to gather the snow or mm. no, dust before. Not on a racing tyre. No? The, the shoulder means that you would get a wider contact area. Okay. And that was an important part for Mini. So it's not the, the angle is, is not important at the... It, it, well, it's, it would be better to have a bigger tyre, to have a, mm. a nicer angle. Yeah. It means have a longer contact pattern, because Mini had a very short one. Mm. And we couldn't change it, because we, have, we were stuck with the 10-inch tyres, but having the racing tyre, we could have the pattern wider, so the total contact area could be increased by the racing tyre. 